Hi, my name is Francisco and welcome to another video on the marketing research series. And in this video, I want to talk to you about how to create a wonderful structured survey questionnaire for your study. My first suggestion to you would be to always in the right in the beginning to have a brief description as to what the study is about. If you're going to use um, that data for academic purpose or for commercial purpose, if um, this is an anonymous study, uh, if there is a really important concept that you discuss throughout the entire survey, you can maybe uh, give us brief definition. So for example, um, I've done previous studies on artificial intelligence or on virtual reality or facial recognition technologies. And you know, sometimes people don't know what facial recognition technology is. And on, right on the beginning, on the disclaimer, so to say, um, page or the explanation or introduction page, you can just give like a brief description or a brief um, definition. And this way, whenever the respondent is answering all of those questions, the following questions, uh, they're going to know exactly what those concepts are about. My second suggestion to you is in, is, uh, in the use of a filter question. A filter question is usually a brief question that you have in the beginning of your, of your structured survey to split people who are within the population of your study and people who aren't or to exclude people who are not part of your population. For example, uh, imagine that I'm doing a study about smokers and I'm not a smoker. I, by the way, you shouldn't be a smoker either. But anyway, this is a different story. Imagine that if I'm not a, a smoker, I shouldn't answer the questions about smoking, right? So either I would click on no, say I'm not a smoker and the following page would be an exiting page saying thank you but you're not part of the population of your study or I would continue and I would answer all of the other questions if it's of interest for the researcher to compare smokers and non-smokers and that question will ask will act as like a flagging so that later on you can do like a t-test or whichever test that you can compare different groups of between non-smokers and smokers. So my second suggestion to you is uh, have a filter question if you want to either exclude people who are not within the population of your study by leading them to an exiting page or using that to differentiate people who are within the population of your study and people who aren't if you want to do comparisons afterwards. My third suggestion to you is in relation to demographical questions. Demographic questions are questions like age, gender, um, profession, level of education, income, and so on. And um, the main mistake the, or something that I would not recommend is to have these demographical questions on the beginning of your structured survey. And why is that? Because some demographical questions can be quite sensitive, like for example, income. Some people might not feel very comfortable in saying how much they earn. Or if it's a question about relationship status, if um, someone is single, married, divorced, and maybe someone is divorced and doesn't want to talk about it. And if they don't feel comfortable with saying their relationship status or, or their religion or how much they make per month, they might say, oh, I'm not going to answer this. And they're simply going to leave. So leave your demographical questions to the end of your study. This would be my recommendation. Another reason for that is also because um, in the end, depending on the survey, it can be quite long. And in the end, the respondent's gonna be a little bit tired. And you don't want the, the tired mind to be answering relevant questions. You want a fresh mind. So um, you want the fresh mind in the beginning of the study to be answering the, the really relevant questions. So leave demographics to the end because demographics is just quick. And if, um, for example, they don't feel so comfortable answering, telling how much they've earned, they've answered everything before. So it increases the likelihood that they will either answer it or if um, they don't feel like answering, if they just quit by the end, they're already going to have uh, given you the answer about all of the questions before. Another recommendation is in relation to question format, because very often uh, in structured surveys, um, researchers use multiple choice questions when it's not suitable to do so. For example, imagine that I'm doing a study about Coca-Cola products. And then very often you, you could see questions like, what is your favorite Coca-Cola drink? And then you would have Coke, Sprite, Fanta, Coke Light, Coke Zero, and so on and then people would tick on the ones that they like the most. Okay, in the end you're gonna do 35% prefer classic Coke and so on. But the problem with that is that we drink all of those drinks, but we drink, we drink them with different frequencies. 
The problem with doing multiple choice question is that number one, it's limiting in terms of the data that it generates. When you have a multiple choice and you click on just the options, you generate what is called a categorical data. And the only thing which you can do is frequencies to say 25% of people drink this one, 30% of people drink that one and so on. But if you frame this into a matrix, a matrix is like when you have all of the products listed and then on top you have a liquor type scale. For example, imagine that you have Coke, Fanta, Sprite and the question instead of being which drink you prefer, the question would be something like how frequently do you drink the following drinks from never to a great deal. I'm going to not only give you data about all of the different Coca-Cola products, but I'm going to give you them in form of interval data. So afterwards with interval data, you can run all different types of tests. You can run correlations, you can run t-tests, ANOVA, ANCOVA, MANOVA. Um, you can run a number of different tests. So not only by, you, by framing um, these sort of questions into a matrix instead of a multiple choice, not only you generate interval data instead of categorical data, but you give much more detailed uh, information about all of the products. So whenever you have different product types, different service, service uh, type or brand types, uh, be very careful to not be using um, multiple choice questions when you shouldn't. If it's a question about behavior, how frequently we do something or perception, what we think about something, it's not black and white. It's not a binary answer. So um, in those scenarios, uh, make sure to frame them in the matrix where you have all of the options and then on top a Laker type scale so you can generate interval data about all of the options. Another suggestion that I have to you is a very common mistake that I often see which is when in descriptive uh, structured surveys um, the researchers induce the respondents to position themselves when they say for example how do you feel about our service and then they have very satisfied, they have satisfied, very satisfied, dissatisfied, and very dissatisfied. What if I'm indifferent? If you don't add a middle point in that scale, you're inducing someone to either be positive or negative about that. And um, that is obviously not a great thing because the, the consumer can simply be indifferent. Very often I consume products, I consume services that I just think that are okay. I'm not mega satisfied, I'm not satisfied, but I'm also not dissatisfied, I'm just, eh, I'm just indifferent. So my suggestion is whenever you're asking people's perceptions of something, always allow a midpoint in that scale. Don't use even scales because if you do this, then you're inducing people to either position themselves negatively or positively about something when they can simply be indifferent. Another very common mistake that I see, and hopefully you're not going to do this, is when you have um, options. They're not evenly distributed. For example, if you ask participants uh, to mark their age groups and then they have under 18, 18 to 21, if it's 18 to 21, I have a three-year uh, bracket. So the next one needs to be 22 to 25, 26 to 29 and so on. Make sure that whenever you have these evenly, these, these categories, these categories that are distributed, that they're evenly distributed. If you have a distribution of income, that th these are evenly distributed and they also encompass every possible um, uh, range within the, the scale that you're using. Another very important thing is make sure that you develop uh, questions that are valid. Uh, in other words, questions that are actually addressing the research aim or the research problem that you're trying to address. So for example, if you, in case you want to measure consumers um, attitude towards a brand, don't just make up questions measuring attitude. Uh, make sure that you use the marketing handbook of scales because then you're going to have a series of predefined um, scales that can measure all of these constructs. So I'm going to put here on the, on the description of this video a link of re marketing research books and then there you can find a set of uh, uh, marketing research scale handbooks. And then in these handbooks you find a series of scales to measure satisfaction, attitude, risk, effective response, involvement, trust and a number of other constructs. 
Um, and in this way, you can make sure that when you apply those items in your questionnaire, you're actually having valid items that have been previously validated in previous studies. So you don't run the risk of trying to make up questions that in the end are not actually addressing the factor that you want to measure. Another very common mistake uh, that I see in many studies is when respondents are repeating the exact same format of the questions. Uh, make sure that you change the formatting so you can you know you can have visually a difference so that the respondent doesn't have the feeling that they're answering the exact same thing over and over so you can mix up a slider with a matrix with a multiple choice um, sometimes even if you're using a matrix you can format the matrix in a different way uh, if you can have different headings for your questions you can have different types of, of either sliders or drop down where you click and you have a drop down change more or less the visual formatting of the questions um, because otherwise it can just become too repetitive to the respondent and if it's too repetitive for the respondent they're just going to be um, they won't notice the differences anymore they're going to desensitize to the formatting of your survey yeah and my final suggestion to you is in case you're using any of those free online uh, platforms in order to develop your structured surveys such as quicksurveys.com or SurveyMonkey or in others Make sure, regardless of the one that you use, make sure that you use one that you can download the raw Excel sheet with all of your data. Because this way you can transfer this data to all the statistical software such as SAS or SPSS so that you can run further analysis. Uh, usually those platforms will give you descriptive results such as averages or uh, means, right? The same thing as averages or percentages, distributions. Um, but that's very basic, that's very elementary. Um, if you wanna do any further testing, you need to have that data. So make sure that you check for that so you don't run the risk of uh, running your study and then in the end you cannot run any further test because you cannot have access to the raw data. So yes, my friend, so generally speaking, those will be my suggestions. If you feel so inclined, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Here in the description, I'm gonna give you further links with uh, statistical support in case you're writing your thesis. There's also lots of material there to support you with writing your thesis. Um, if you need further support with uh, um, marketing research, don't forget to watch the other videos of this series. Also, there's a lot of material uh, on, the, on the description. Yeah, that is it for now. All the absolute best for you and your study. Take care and bye-bye.